All right. And take all of you and expand this so that I can see everybody or try to see everybody. All right. So uh, I want to welcome everybody tonight to the kickoff event for the 2023 Be Your Own Boss Bowl program. Um, first and foremost, you know, everybody should know that the Zoom is being recorded. We like to record these so that we can share them out with people who were not able to attend. But also, um, you know, if you want to go back and, and review material or, or uh, you know, just think about some of the, the things that are going to be shared on this program, but also subsequent workshops, um, those recordings are all available to you. Um, to kick it off for people that don't know, the Be Your Own Boss Bowl, this is the 25th annual, and it's a pitch competition that Temple University offers. The program overall has free mentorship, workshops, we provide funding to the finalist ventures that make it. Um, in, in addition to the funding, there are service prizes that are offered by a number of sponsors for the program. Um, and the program is open to anyone in the Temple University community. So that's all students, both undergraduate and graduate, alumni, faculty, and staff from all 17 schools and colleges within Temple University. Um, the, the program is, is, is one of the richest in terms of prize money and, and award packages of, of any of the programs offered in the, uh, across the United States in that it is specifically for Temple University. There are some programs out there that offer more money, more packages, and, and these, those packages or those programs are open to you know, anyone. Um, Temple University keeps it closed to the Temple community, and I'll talk more about that later on in, in the workshop. All right. In terms of eligibility, who can enter? So again, you have to be a member of that Temple University community, students, alumni, faculty, or staff. Uh, the leader of the team, the person who would be doing the pitch in the competition, has to have a Temple University affiliation. But not all members of your team have to be part of that Temple University community. So we have had past winners who've had uh, teams represented from several different universities who have participated, but the leader of the team, the person doing the presentation must be the person that has the Temple affiliation. Um, again, we're looking for new or existing businesses and they have to be businesses that have been in operation for less than five years. You cannot have raised more than $50,000 from external institutional funding. So angel investors, VCs, other competition programs, gross sales of less than $100,000. It has to be a for-profit business. So if you're primarily a not-for-profit business, We'd love to sit and talk with you about that to see if there might be a way for you to inject a for-profit element to your business that would still allow you to qualify and participate in the Be Your Own Boss Bowl. And teams can be anywhere from one to up to four members, and we encourage cross-discipline teams. So people from other schools, people from other disciplines typically create the strongest teams for the Be Your Own Boss Bowl. All right, in terms of uh, prizes, again, the, the total combined cash and in-kind service prizes are over $125,000 in value. The competition is sorted into two tracks. There is an undergraduate track and then an upper track, which is for the graduate students, alumni, faculty, and staff. And if your team has uh, somebody from one of the other tracks on it, you're automatically bumped up to that higher track. In each track, we'll be awarding prizes of first, second, third, and fourth place. And then in addition to that, there's also a grand prize award, which is additional money on top of the first place award that goes to one of the two first place teams, all right? Um, Another award, another part of the prize packages are all of the finalist teams 
uh, are required to participate in the Startup Studio program. This is Temple's dedicated business accelerator program to really help get them closer to launching their businesses. That program runs over the summer. There's more information about that uh, available later, but it, it's a, a high quality program, delivers a lot of value to help those teams get closer to launch. Um, the in-kind service packages, I've already mentioned a little bit, but they're typically from our sponsors in the Philadelphia region, and they provide services in uh, legal, accounting, marketing, design, and hosting services. We also offer our very competitive Crowd Favorite Award, our Digital Innovation Award, which is coming from uh, the Digital Innovation Foundry here at Temple University, a global award that's presented by Cyber, which represents uh, international business here at Temple. And uh, this year, again, we're very pleased to announce that we'll be offering a DEI award, which is sponsored by Sedwick, uh, which is promoting uh, equity, diver uh, equity um, diversity, and inclusion here at Temple University. So I'm going to get right to our teams, uh, the people that are pre not presenting, but the people who are participating tonight, who are generous enough to come back and share with you some of their experiences of participating in the Be Your Own Boss Bowl. Um, first up is Ethan Berg, uh, a graduate from Fox of 2020. Uh, not only was he the grand prize winner and first place upper track winner from last year's Be Your Own Boss Bowl, but he was also the grand prize winner in last year's Innovative Idea Competition. We have joining us as well, Kenneth, Kenneth Carter tonight, graduate out of the Engineering School of 2011. Ken was a finalist and won third place in the upper track in the 21st annual Be Your Own Boss Bowl several years ago, and then came back with a new idea, a new concept, and last year took second place in the upper track for the Be Your Own Boss Bowl. And then also with us this evening is Emily Madera. She's a Fox graduate uh, of last year from 2022. She was second place undergraduate winner in last year's uh, 2020 it says 23rd, but actually it was in the 24th annual Be Your Own Boss Bowl. And she was also one of our winners in the Change Maker Challenge uh, as the Crowd Favorite Award. So these are the people joining us tonight as our speakers. And I would like to now turn it over and introduce Ellie Keaton to you. Ellie is one of our very talented student workers here in the IEI, and she's agreed to do moderating duties this evening um, to to uh, guide the discussion between our three Be Your Own Boss Bowl uh, participants. So with that, Emily, um, or uh, Ellie, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Thank you so much, Greg. I'm so excited to see everyone here. Um, we have a really great crowd here on the Zoom. Um, I guess we can just get started with our um, questions for the panelists and feel uh, to the panelists, feel free to jump in on the questions when it, when you want to answer them. Um, so I guess to start off, um, maybe you could each tell us uh, how you heard about the Be Your Own Boss Bowl. You can go first, Ken. Yeah, all right, I'll, I'll start us off. So um, I heard about the Be Your Own Boss Bowl actually um, when I was a student at Temple University. Um, I had a professor, he taught um, White Carey. He taught um, like um, engineer, like entrepreneurship for engineering, something to that effect. You and had those robots? Is that, is that the yeah, guy? I think he, I was in that he, class. He, yeah. you, you remember Dwight. Um, <clears throat> but it's funny because at the time I, I had like, I had really little interest, you know, um, but I never forgot about it. And um, Having graduated and spent some time in industry, um, I had an idea that um, that I pitched um, in, I guess, 2018, 2019, um, that I won third place for. Um, ultimately, that that venture failed, but um, but it was such a great experience, and I learned so much that when I had the the idea for my current venture, uh, which is Abstract Sounds. Um, 
it was really a no-brainer to um to pitch again and and we did and we we did better um the second time around and um I'm really um just like the the, the knowledge from the um startup studio uh the mentors and um just everyone that we uh, met along the way has really been invaluable I can happen after that. Uh, Ethan here. Um, I found, yeah, I, I found out about it, not from Dwight, best professor on campus, though. Honestly, if you have a chance to take him, like 100% should. He's he's awesome. Um, I, I found out my freshman year, I was pretty involved with IEI from the start, um, kind of realized that that was a track for me. I, I, I like to solve problems, I guess would be the thing. Like I see solutions in the problems uh, that I see or experience. So on my end, like I found out about the program um, and figured it was a good opportunity to try to not only just win some money to fund it and grow it, but at the same time learn just about what we were building. So, I mean, as Ken was saying, uh, the mentors, the information, the, the feedback more than anything. Um, I mean, I failed four times, but four times, five times, Greg, I don't know. I, I did it at least five, six times. Um, un until I won last year. So it, it's, it, you know, if you don't win, it's not about being discouraged, but more so you're comp you're competing against yourself, not others. Uh, I'd say that that's the one key is like it, the, the goal within it, at least from what I found through my experience was that you want to, you, you want to learn as much as you can to better prepare yourself and better communicate what you're looking, what your vision is ultimately. Um, other people's visions, they're their visions. It's a different concept. You know, it, you're not competing against them. It's really against yourself. Um, great program though. Uh, definitely echoing both, both of them were saying. Um, I found out actually prior to even coming to Temple, I was looking for an entrepreneurship program. Like in college, I knew that's exactly what I wanted to do. So I, through my research, I found like all of these, all of the different competitions. And I was like, this is where I'm going because I know they'll be able to help me build my ideas. So really thankful for the IEI and all of the resources. But how I actually ended up entering it was that it was my junior year um, in the pandemic. Um, and I had a friend named Caroline, who's my co-founder in ESA, the Entrepreneurial Student Association. I was like, hey, like, it's my junior year, your senior year, like we got time on our hands, why don't we enter the competition? And so that's how we went about it. And we first started with the Changemaker Challenge. Awesome. That's so great to hear about how you guys kind of all got involved in um, the IEI and what motivated you guys to enter the competition. So if you could each describe a little bit about your business and how you came to identify your business um, and that opportunity. Um, I know, Ken, you talked a little bit about um, your business, but I'd love to hear more and from the rest of you. Yeah, for sure. Here, I'll... Um... You go first. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, <Ethan. laughs> All right. So yeah, I'll I'll just give um first just like a quick elevator pitch. But essentially, what we do at Abstract Sounds is um we allow people to make what I what I call bold statements through audio wear. So we have redesigned the headband of overhead headphones, and so I have my I have my blue um abstract DNA model here right now. I also got my red one in, in arm's reach, but but essentially we redesigned the headband of headphones using um, additive manufacturing to give people who want to stand out an opportunity to do so. And the idea came about um, just quickly when I was going on a vacation with some friends. Um, I'm going to the airport and I have at the time skull candy overhead headphones around my neck. And um I swing by the bathroom. I've got skull candy around my neck. I'm going to Cancun, right? So I'm feeling good, right? I think I look cool. Um and when I run into my friends, even from a distance, I can see that they also have their headphones down around their neck. And although they all, were all wearing different brands, right? My one friend's wearing beats, my one friend's wearing Sony, but they all look the same. And um, it got me thinking about how can we, how can I redesign headphones um, in a way that allow the user to stand out, right? Because um, 
everything from like the clothes we wear, the sneakers we wear, everything that we that we wear is making some type of statement about who we are. And I wanted headphones to make a similar statement. Um, and that's really how we got started and down this down this road where we are today. I guess I'll hop in after that. Um, I'm Ethan, uh, founder of Agora World. Uh, I'll do the same. I mean, we're, we're essentially building Canva for the metaverse. Um, I identified the issue. I, I, while I was a student, I started building a VR shopping platform. Um, I don't know how to code for reference. I have no idea how to do development. And through the process of building that, what I ultimately discovered was there's a massive barrier to entry to creating 3D content and immersive social experiences. So if, if you want to actually go and create a custom experience today, you need a minimum $50,000 and at least two and a half months of runway. So what we've done is build a no code drag and drop 3D creation platform that lets you create professional design, professional quality uh, 3D content and immersive social experiences in minutes. So we got templates. Uh, models, design elements, so that, that, that to help you get started, but you can also build from scratch. Um, and, you know, we leaned in on that issue because of my own experience. Um, I don't know how to code. I couldn't build it. And that just really bothered me that I couldn't help my development team, right? So we started leaning in on, well, let me upload images and videos, you know, the standard stuff we do to social media already. Um, and since then, we've really continued to lean in on just my experience as a user of, well, why isn't there a better way for someone that has an idea like I did for shopping to be able to just spin it up in 45 minutes and showcase it? So that, that's essentially exactly what we've done. Um, and yeah, so, so today we're just we're, we're working on launching in May uh, officially. It's been an alpha. We've got a bunch of brands on it today. And, um, you know, in, in May, that will be browser based. So Instead of a Zoom, we could essentially be inside of a virtual IEI or 1810 accelerator space where we'd be able to interact just like you would in the real world. Um, so really excited for that. That sounds so exciting for both of you guys. Um, so my name's Emily. Um, I'm the co-founder of the Sun and Star Collective and my product is a duo case. I meant to bring it with me today to work, but I'm so sorry I forgot. Um, I can send a link to our website in the chat. Um, it's a double eyeglass case that fits varying sizes of glasses. So from small reading glasses to large frame sunglasses. Um, the idea is that it's in a com convenient, compact case. So it's like very easy for traveling. It's about the size of your average plastic water bottle um, and it's space saving. So um, originally we were building a whole brand around it, hence the Sun and Star Co, but recently we have had a change in development um, after learning about what our manufacturing costs are. So right now we're actually planning our exit strategy um, for either selling the intellectual property, which we have a patent, as well as um, potentially licensing it. That's so awesome for all of you guys. It's so great hearing about your businesses. Um, so when developing your business, what kind of help did you receive from the IEI in developing your um, idea? Uh, a lot, uh, like across the board. I mean, I think the programs were great in itself. Uh, just being able to meet others that were also working on similar or different concepts in itself. It, it's always good to I, I think the best thing is to be able to get my idea out there and receive feedback just because everyone perceives what you say differently. So it allowed me to uh, constantly test, iterate, and, and change the way I was messaging what we were building until it was refined enough that I felt comfortable with the, with the message we were trying to convey. You know, what problem are we solving? Uh, what, what, why do we exist? Um, and I mean, I was in the classes. I will say, I think that the classes in itself, which Greg, correct me if I'm wrong, they're open to all students, right? No matter the major or school. Yeah, yeah I mean, there are some... <laughs> There are some I'm courses. Closed off. Okay. Well, no, no, there are some. There are some courses that I think um, are open. You know, the Gen Ed that are open to just about anybody, and then there are some courses that I think are more specific that you have to be in the major or minor to take them. Got it. Well, there were regardless. I mean, if there are some that are open, I, I will say if you're interested in this, there's no better way to to learn than take a class where you're working on your own business. You know, um, I would just say not not only is it enjoyable because it doesn't feel like 
a waste like some of your educational classes may feel, um, like it's purpose driven. And uh, I'd say that the, the mentorship and guidance and expertise through the courses in itself as well, on top of what the program IEI, Greg and the 1810 Accelerator provide, um, I guess kind of all culminates. So, yeah. Yeah, so um, so for my, for my experience, um, one thing that really stuck out from um, what I've learned through the IEI is kind of like, um, customer discovery, customer um, interviews, things like really learning about your customer. And, and when we really did a, uh, a deep dive into that, we learned a few things. Um, one was that over 60% of our, our audience was, um, was artists, like, like up and coming uh, musical artists or, or people who in some way um, considered themselves creators, right? And that made so much sense because because the headphones is something that will help you to stand out especially in an industry where where it's very your survival is uh your ability to stand out um <clears throat> so when we when we leaned into that um we were looking to get our headphones on um popular local artists right um and um, we've we've been working with one guy who um, he he has a, a really large following uh, local artist in Philadelphia. And um, as we're working with him, he's like, "Man, these headphones are cool." Um, you know, asking us about um, how did we design the headband, how difficult was it? And then finally, he just he's asked a question that I'm sure he's been wanting to ask. He's like, "Could you design a a headband for me, basically?" Right? Like. Um, with his with his input, could could we design a headband for him? Which which we can because the headband is is additively manufactured, right? Um, it's three D printed. We could easily do that. And so, exploring that, and then also talking to another popular artist, um, we kind of somewhat um, find ourselves almost in somewhat of a pivot where. Um, Ethan said something interesting. He he called his product the Canva of um, of like uh, virtual reality design, and we now kind of position ourselves as the the Nike of the headphone industry. In which what we could what we can do is um, the same way Nike provides signature shoe lines for for athletes, whether it be LeBron James or Luka Doncic, whoever it is. We have the opportunity now to provide signature headphone lines, right, for musical artists. And um, that's something that we probably would not have come across if it wasn't for the um, the reinforcement from the IEI of, like, you've got to learn your customer, you've got to talk to your customer. And um, so that's something that um, we really took from um, from um, the Be Your Own Boss Bowl and the IAI, um, just like really like customer discovery, customer interviews and those type of things. Definitely, I owe it all to the IAI. Like I wouldn't, I feel like wouldn't have even really discovered my problem without learning how to like actively look for a problem in like an entrepreneurial um, thinking sense. So uh, how I discovered my problem was I was actively just looking for problems like in my everyday life um, for class. And I found that my mom was having a hard time fitting her two eyeglass cases, one, her sunglasses and her eyeglasses, um, like in her purse. And she was shopping for a new purse. And she's like, well, I can't get the size I want because I have these two big bulky fashion eyeglass cases. So definitely from the beginning, even just thinking in that way, I learned that exactly what everyone's communicating is through the classes for sure. But also just being in the IEI 1810 space is like so important, like to network with people, attend these um, sessions, um, as well as just being in the Entrepreneurial Student Association, like through there, you also get like feedback just like from other students, but then you come to sessions like this where you have times with expert mentors where you can really just like show them what you have up front and get feedback right away. Um, honestly, everything is super useful in the IEI. So I definitely suggest like joining the clubs, just being in the space, taking the classes if you can, but also one resource that doesn't get used enough is probably the expert mentors. There's literally a list of people that you would normally pay hundreds of dollars to talk to, like just right on your, oh, I'm sorry, Greg, I forget the name of the portal, but I have a Part picture in my head. 
start up tree. tree. Start a tree. Yes. So um, definitely like use that. That's how um, I got connected with one of my mentors, Tom, um, who has experience in the eyewear or eye industry. Um, and then he connected us with our local engineers that have been really like pivotal and just helping us move forward, like with our product and literally making it from scratch. So anything that the II has, like an event, um, expert mentoring, uh, the competitions, even just going to see what's up, um, they're all really amazing. And I definitely would not be where I am today without, you know, Greg, Alan, all of the professors and uh, just the space itself too. That's awesome. The IAI is great. And I don't just say that as a student worker, I truly believe it. It is great. Um, <laughs> so I just wanted to check in. Um, I think I saw Bernardo, you had your hand raised. Um, just wanted to open it up to questions from the audience if you still had a question. Yeah. No, I was just going to ask Ethan, like you said, you had the, I guess for Ken as well, like, was it the same idea that you guys answered multiple times until you got the prize or was it always a different idea? They submitted? It was a different one almost every time. <laughs> uh, yeah, the first one was a indoor park for cold cities. So in the winter, you have somewhere you can go that's like green and like feels good mentally. Um, the second one was a nap pod that you would install in places to let people nap. That obviously COVID really screwed that one up. And then forget what the third one was, it was something. And then it was VR shopping. And then it was this. So I submitted this one twice, two different iterations. And then the VR shopping one the year before that. Um, so that, it was different. I mean, again, like you, I think you learn a lot through the process. So uh, it, yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong about either route. Yeah, gotcha. Thanks. See, Ken has his hand up. Oh, Ken. But his on mute. <laughs> you're on mute. You're on mute. Am I allowed to ask a question or is that okay? Depends. Is I don't see me? why not. Okay. <laughs> so, Ethan, I know when we were going through um, Startup Studio, or I think you were fundraising. Are you Are you currently fundraising? Yeah, we're, we're raising right now. Um, we actually have a few offers that we're hoping to close at the end of this week. So, really, fingers fingers crossed. How about yourself? So I'm not I'm not fundraising currently. Um, I'm planning for a launch in June. Um, for a, so we did a small pre-sale um, around uh, around the time of the Be Your Own Boss Bowl last year. We did kind of a small pre-sale just to um, kind of fill the market out. Um, I'm planning to do a large launch in June via um, Probably Kickstarter, but some type of like um, some type of like crowdfunding. It's probably going to be Kickstarter, um, but I expect that to launch in June. Good for you. Yeah. Uh, what was the other one? I, I can send you a few that we've talked to that were pretty good. Republic was fantastic. Republic.com. Um, they're they are great people. They're very exclusive with crowdfunding. So if you get accepted, there's a much higher chance you'll actually raise through their platform than others. Um, at least from what I've seen, like very, like somewhat high barrier, but they're very nice. I can connect you to them if you'd like. They're really nice people. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Yeah. I also had some more, I guess, like uh, um, not technical questions, but just about the program itself. Um, so one was around the IEI, um, I don't know, they call it the summer camp or something. Is that something that is one required and two, like, available for anybody that enters a competition or only for those who win? So, yeah, the program you're talking about is, is called uh, Startup Studio, and it's the business accelerator program that we run. Uh, typically, it's run during the summer, mm -hmm. although we have also run it sometimes uh, in the fall. Um, but that program is, if you're a finalist in the Be Your Own Boss Bowl, it's a required program. Um, you know, if we're uh, going to be writing big checks in some cases to the right. teams. We want to make sure that they're getting some additional guidance. Um, I, I like to think of it a little bit as like a safety net that, that helps these teams think through what their next steps really should be and how to best spend that money. And, yeah. and you know, all three of these speakers have been through Startup Studio some of you twice, <laughs> and and some of them have even been members in other business accelerator programs 
uh, throughout the city. Like, for example, Emily was at the uh, one of the accelerator programs over at University of Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. Um, and so and, and Ethan, you and Ken both may have been in other programs as well. So um, it's the program we run. It's targeted specifically to those finalists from Be Your Own Boss Ball and other high potential teams. So if you're on our radar and you're really working hard on your business and you, you know, we think that you'd be a good candidate to bring into the program, we very well, we very well might invite you to participate in the program or make us aware that you want to be in the program. Yeah, and, no, I think it'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. Just, and, I, and I'm then, thinking more like logistically, like what is that like weekends? Cause I'm just thinking like, uh, got to keep the day job until you know the the um the, the company starts working so right 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 well i'm, I'm gonna give you just a, a quick answer on this and then i'm gonna put it back to the panel because yeah. uh, at the end of the panel discussion tonight i'm gonna cover like bigger general questions about the competition and the programs all okay. right and i want to okay. get back so that they have a chance to talk about it but the but the quick answer is startup studio typically runs two nights a week from six to nine o'clock at night. And so we do that specifically to give people a, an opportunity that if they've got day jobs, they can do their day job and still participate in Startup Studio uh, throughout the program for the summer. All right? Okay. All right, thank you. Yeah. Awesome, all great questions. So, um... It's great hearing the panelists interact with each other and Ken hearing you ask a question. Um, so my next question for you all is what the most difficult challenge for you in developing your submission or your business was and how did you kind of overcome that um, challenge? So maybe Emily, we could start with you. Uh, <laughs> I was going to send me a little time, but um so i entered the beer and ball school twice um undergrad first year uh graduate second year due to my partner being graduated at that point um i think the first year um we had just entered the change maker so it was taking a very small pitch with that's more of a starting idea and basically elevating it and trying to um figure out what our business plan was from the beginning so I definitely say the first one was just figuring out all the details and what was really the most important high level information that needed to be included in the presentation um and making sure you have everything that anything that the judges might ask you want to have already answered right in your presentation um I would say that was definitely the hardest part. And at the same time, ours was product-based. So we were also worried about having a physical model as well to definitely just like help convey the product. Um, what did I do to hmm, to get some help? Definitely attending all of the Be Your Own Boss Bowl, like sessions or as many as I could between me and my partner. Um, having weekly meetings with Greg, Alan, any professor that I had at the time, Carrie Slade, um, some teachers that are just other like Fox professors, you know, really just getting a lot of feedback and showing as many people with uh, different knowledge and expertise and getting feedback about how I can make it better. Um, what do I, what do I need to do next? What do I need to be thinking about? Um, how do I do financial projections? Just everything in between. Definitely the sessions help a lot, but also having those expert mentor sessions as well as like professors and Greg and Alan are really like super helpful. Uh, on my end, biggest challenge, the biggest challenge for us is, was to convince people that this was the future. Um, we, you know, what, we started building it like the VR shopping platform in 2019. So pre-COVID. So everyone I showed it to that we were building was telling me I was ridiculous uh, and that there is no reason at all we needed something like that because you're in person every day. You know, why, why does anyone need the ability to interact online in a more, more human fashion? And I think that you know, COVID plus uh, the Facebook kind of calling themselves meta it kind of set the stone of like, okay, this is actually happening, um, as well as the adoption of the technology continuing to rise and, and people realizing you can 
have these experiences elsewhere. I mean, even today, I, I face this challenge constantly where people ask me, you know, what is the metaverse? What are immersive experiences? Like, what does it mean um, and why? So there, there's a lot of education that goes behind it. But I would say that it's, it, it's still an evolving process of how you educate people in the correct fashion. Um, so I, I'd say that is definitely the biggest learning, um, as well as the, I mean, as, as Emily was saying, the feedback from mentors and advisors, as I was building it were tremendous. I met one of my longtime advisors. I, I'm still with him, Stephen. Um, he's been building companies since the night, the 1980s, um, multiple VR companies. So he's seen it since VR started back in the nineties, um, you know, well before, you know, we are even here today, right? So he's brought in expertise from when it was a blank slate kind of mindset of what should the industry be? Where should this be going? And it's helped guide us in a direction towards realizing that vision rather than what I'm able to perceive from the things that I've seen in my own experience. So I, I think that's been tremendously beneficial. It's an ever evolving process. And um, yeah, for me, my answer is going to be almost identical to Emily's. Um, when I was starting, and so so I, I entered the competition twice, um, the first one, uh, 2018, 2019. Um, but especially the first time, I had no clue how, like, how startups worked or anything, right? And um, I attended every single, whether it was a, a lecture or a program or a, a Zoom event, I attended every single one. And um, that's what really helped me, right? Like from like building a pitch deck or like, you know, um, lean canvas or whatever the case was, I attended every single one. And um, that's what really kind of helped me get over that um, kind of fear that I like didn't know what I was doing. Um, and now for the second time around with Abstract Sounds, um, I felt a little more equipped, but um, my my fear then was that um, traction, right? I felt like I didn't really have any traction. And so um, one of the things that we did was um, we just opened up a small free cell, right? And I didn't have I had like one pair of headphones that I would just wear, but I didn't have any like inventory, anything like that. But I just opened up a really small pre-sale just to see if people would buy it and people did buy it. And then I said, see, BYOB, see, we have traction, right? And that's kind of how we, um, that's kind of how I um, handled that. That's awesome. It's great to hear what everyone has, um, how everyone has come over. Um, encountered challenges and then uh, moved over them and is still developing and everything. Um, so I guess moving into a more BYOBB as a whole, um, what did you learn from your BYOBB experience? That failure doesn't mean failure necessarily. Uh, like that's what I'd say. I, I lost five times before, before I won. So um, like, I, I think persistence is key. Like, that's kind of one of the things one of my advisors always said to us, um, that it, every time you want to quit, anyone you're competing against has also gotten to that point and 90% quit every single time you get to that point. So, you know, persistence is key in the sense of learning from your failures, not looking at them as a literal failure, but rather as an opportunity to gain knowledge and expertise to how to get to your success. Um, and utilizing that to overcome every single moment that you want, you know, you have days where they're great. You have other days where it's like, man, I don't know what I'm doing. And, and like, you know, that, that's just how it is regardless. Um, so I'd say that the biggest learning hands down is that, you know, to learn from your failures rather than to look at them as a, just a failure in itself. Yeah, definitely. Um, I would say two things would be that you're being an entrepreneur means that you're going to be forever like learning, like you never can stop learning and you will learn new things that will change your whole perspective on your business even whenever. Um, I know that definitely like uh, was a reality for me recently. Um, and then number two it would be that connections are everything. You are only like one question away from maybe finding a possible answer. So definitely don't be afraid to ask that professor or share, like, even if you don't know what their background is, um, just ask them, talk to them about your, the product, ask them a question. Oh, you need a legal connection. Don't be afraid to ask Greg or ask 
anything related to anything about your business. Um, don't be afraid to ask questions and because you never know where that will get you. Definitely for sure. If I look back on my college experience and how I got to one thing and another, most of the time it was always through connection. All my internships and my jobs, my job where I'm at right now, um, like literally all through connections. So definitely take that away as an entrepreneur and just as you get into it too. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I definitely reiterate what Ethan and Emily said. Um, for me, like the the biggest thing that kind of, well, one of the biggest things that stuck with me through um, my experience with uh, Be Your Own Boss competition and uh, Startup Studio is um, something Greg had taught us, which is um, demo, sell, build. Like I'm going to, I'm going to tack to that somewhere. Um, but um a lot, I think my, when I first, my first company that um, ultimately failed, um, I think we did it pretty much completely backwards where we tried to like build, then demo and then sell. And that it just doesn't work. Right. So um, um, we've been very intentional um, with how we, how we move forward with um, demoing and then selling. And then lastly, uh, building any, any actual product. I'm going to back him up on that. Uh, our first venture failed purely because we built it before we asked customers if they needed it. Uh, I would 100% say validate before you do anything else. Like uh, as he was saying, we don't build a single feature until we validated with our users that they actually need that feature. So without a doubt, going to back him on that. Susan, you have a question? Yes, it's kind of an add on to the previous answers. I want to know how do you like have a sense that your idea is going to work? Because um, I basically, through different programs, um, I heard that some there are some great ideas for potential business to actually work, but it might just not be the right time yet, just because of circumstances or like how um, everything is. Like, how do you know? if this is the time to actually go out and pivot your ideas and start a business validate without a doubt just yeah talk to your customers are they willing to pay for it is a technology at a point if technology is needed in order to build it like to actualize the product that you're looking to create um like i'd say those are kind of the main factors. yeah is the technology there to do it and then do people actually are they willing to pay for it like do they need it does it solve their problem today Yeah, I mean, I can't, I can't really say it any better than that. Um, but yeah, you really have to see. So for us, it was important to see if people would pay for it. So when I when I did this the small pre launch, I mean, we we did charge for that, right? Like it wasn't it wasn't free. Um, and so when people paid for a product, that was um, that was a source of validation. And um, and when I said we're doing the launch in June, that's again that's going to be a pre sell, right? Um, we're going to have to make sure that people pay for it before we actually build anything. Definitely another way to uh, like test if people are interested in your idea and what I have in my, the Alan's voice in my head saying is also like starting with the website and getting people like to go on your site and commit to subscribing like their email or as Kenneth's like um, doing, you know, getting like pre-sale orders, like commitments to that you want to learn about when this product is launching. Um, so definitely learn that through Alan. We have a wait list. So again, to back, back Emily on that. Yeah, hundred percent. Just get people to sign up saying they'd be willing to pay for it at X. They want X product. It solves this problem. And that's still, it's a, it should be enough validation at a certain scale that you can say it solves, it, it truly can solve a, t a problem today. Can I just, add, oh, sorry. I think Anthony had his end up there. I'm to jump the line. I'll put my hand up. Yeah, I, uh, no, thanks. I appreciate that. Yeah, uh, along those lines, what methods are you finding that are best to get uh, appropriate feedback from the people that you're getting validation from? And how are you confirming that that validation is in fact, or that feedback that you're getting is in fact useful and not, you know, not missing something? And I can give an example. 
uh, of what I'm asking. So we struggled, we've pivoted in our organization and we struggled in getting feedback from some of the end stakeholders or users of our program. And they were kind of quiet quitting us and, and ghosting us before quiet quitting was even a thing. Uh, so I feel like we're trailblazers in that space, at least. Um, so how how do you find, you know, the best method to get that validation when you're struggling to get actual feedback? I mean, we, we I have like scheduled calls for biweekly with those that are paying for our services. Um, I, I'd say that that's number one. Um, I also, yeah, I mean, in, in terms of, of in, in terms of, my, my father always said, don't get distracted by shiny objects. Like I'd say, everyone's got great ideas, but if one person says that this is great and then 99 other people focus on a different problem, chances are there's a bigger problem than that one shiny object. So you should focus on that. Um, so I would just say, like, follow those, like, don't get distracted by shiny objects, like focus on the, the beachhead, like where are people looking, what are they looking for today and why? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll jump in. Um, so th that, that, that's also, um, I think that's probably a problem that we all kind of deal with, um, to some extent. Um, so I also followed up with, um, with all of our customers who did participate in the pre-sale, um, and try to get feedback from them. And I'll just tell you one kind of interesting story. Um, we had we'd offered um like a like a money back guarantee, right? Like if the headphones break or anything like that. Um and nobody used it. So I'm like, oh great, all our headphones are working perfectly, right? And um as we started um reaching out to customers, right? Um, I'll tell you uh one in particular, right? I reached out to him, he says, Yeah, my my headphones broke X amount of time ago, right? And I'm like, Well, why didn't you say anything? Like we would we would have returned the money. He was like, Well. I just kind of glued them back together because I wanted to keep wearing. Like I didn't want the money back; I wanted the headphones. And for <laughs> us, it was like, and for us, you know, it's funny, but we kind of took that as like validation, right? Because he didn't return the headphones. He 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 rather kind of glued them back himself and keep wearing them rather than um, return them to us. So so for us, it's really just like really open communication with. Um, with um like really our 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 how, how you call the term Greg like um our early adopters um yeah for your, uh, yeah your early adopters I'd also say it, it that would make, get me thinking maybe you should be raising your price yeah yeah if somebody if somebody's willing to to use your broken headphones right and try to fix them themselves you might be undercharging but but that's you know that's something else to think about. That's fair. That's fair. I'm not really in the same position as our other two panelists. So I like pretty much have a prototype for me and Caroline. That's like, that's great. Um, but right now, since we are just uh, as of like this month changing our strategy right now, like we're more focused on how are we exiting than proving um, if customers will buy it like at our price point and our exact product since we're hoping that somebody else will manufacture it. Um, but definitely something that we've done recently is just taking our prototypes and like going like places where we can find people to just like show them the case, talk to them about it, and then have them just like sign up on our website, um, just so we can have their email, um, for the future. But right now we're a little bit in the planning period right now. Two things on that, just for you, Emily, go to glasses stores. My mom carries like four, four cases with her every day so like and i'm assuming that's most people if, if they wear glasses they like greg you have sunglasses mm -hmm. yeah i figure yeah I, I i have glasses and sunglasses like that you know i, I hate carrying around two cases it's so frustrating so uh just throwing that out there like I, go there uh, have people sign saying that they pay for it before it ships uh like drop shipping and then they'll pay for the manufacturing um the only other thing i wanted to say is like solve your own problem also of like that would be the key for for us at least is like i'm solving my problem that i'm facing so when i hear advice from or feedback i ask myself as the end user i'm building a tool for me you know like, like as much as it's for others like me um 
I'm really building something that I want to use. So I double check it with myself as a user and saying like, is this something that I really need or is this something I care about? And if the answer is a no and there's higher priorities then there's a good chance it's a shiny object. That's all really great. Bernardo, did you have a question? Another question as well? Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of similar to what Anthony was asking and kind of relates to what Emily said, but essentially in any product or any company, right? You're going to have some stakeholders like an investor or something that has a, uh, an interest in seeing you succeed. And like they, they might give you more, uh, more investment as the company grows. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so I guess the question is really, how do you keep those stakeholders informed of this validation that you like, you might be getting the validation yourself and then you are, if you're, I, I know my product is good. But how do I prove to my investors? How do you keep that line of communication with investors and other stakeholders? I send quarterly updates. So I have a template that I built where I just fill in the blanks with our growth product that you know we built and released over X amount of time. Uh, and I also send out monthly newsletters to every single user, everyone in our community and investors as well. So they know what's happening in the next month. Interesting. Um, okay, so we're starting to run low on time. So um, I'm going to ask probably one or two more questions. Um, so I just want to know what you have done with your business since you presented at the B at the Beer on Boss Bowl. Um, and I know, Ethan, you're heading out in a minute. So maybe you could answer two questions in one. But what would you want future participants to know about competing in the BYOBB? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll start with the first one. Uh, what have we accomplished since, uh, last year when we submitted, I believe we were just a virtual experience platform, come and have events and stuff. Um, in June, we released a no code creation tool, uh, early alpha version. Uh, we've grown a thousand percent across the board since then six months, which is pretty amazing. Um, that tool is absolutely, that, that, that gate was a game changer without a doubt. Um, and we also just released last week a developer toolkit so that developers are able to build extended functions that further empower no-code users to do more uh, with those building blocks. So like WordPress for 3D ultimately. Um, and yeah, and now we're heading to the web. So the to be browser-based, so it's not a downloadable app. And then in terms of what you should know about BYOBB, I mean, I think it's worth taking a shot. Like there's no, there's no loss by doing it other than your time. Uh, and ultimately the learnings you get out of it are more valuable than the amount of time you'd sit there thinking about it anyway. Like I think getting it, that the process of putting it on paper in itself is invaluable purely because you get insight into your own idea. You have to refine it into, you know, a certain amount of words, character limits, pages, right? And that just keeps you with making sure it's concise um, and therefore having a better understanding of why you're doing what you're doing and what you are ultimately trying to do. Um, so I, I don't think there's any loss to doing it. I think there's only benefits and opportunities to grow. So um, if you're afraid of not winning or, or whatever the, the, your fear uh, might be, whatever that barrier is, like I'd overcome it and say, you're going to put some, some time in to do it because I, I promise you there, you won't come out of it feeling like you wasted your time unless you truly did. Like if you don't put effort, you're not going to get the value out of it. Um, so that, that is what I would leave you all with. I do have to jump in a minute or two. I'll stick around until, uh, until then. Um, so what we're at now, um, as I mentioned, is we're changing our business plan completely. Um, so we're working on some just different prototypes. So we have them uh, moving forward as we're speaking with uh, companies that can help us uh, license out our product. Um, so we're looking to either sell that intellectual property or license it. Um, so that's in the works now. And what would I say about the beer on boss? Well, exactly what Ethan said, just enter. There's no, you're and enter any of the competitions too. Like the beer on boss will is like, you know, the highest level, the highest prizes, but there's also all those other great competitions that can help you validate it. If you are, if you don't think you have enough time, let's say for this semester, tend to be your own boss will start in the innovative idea competition, start in the change maker challenge. And then you'll have another stepping stone to go to the beer on boss will the following 
following year. So I definitely just say enter, like take a risk. Maybe um, for me, I like found my friend, my partner, um, my co-founder, you know, through one of my clubs, just simply asking, hey, you want to enter the competition? So if it is like a little intimidating for you, like having another person might be helpful. It just depends on your own like personal like work style, but definitely just enter and use all of the IEI's resources for sure. And talk to Greg and Alan and Dwight too. Yeah, and um, so for us, I mentioned um, around the time when we were preparing to uh, to pitch for uh, Be Your Own Boss Bowl, we had opened up a small pre-sale. So from then, we um, we fulfilled those orders. Um, we we checked back in with uh, customers, um, saw what was working, what wasn't working, um, corrected some of the issues where um, we did have. Um, a pair of break. Um, the headphones we sold, um, by the way, were like very minimal viable, viable product. I mean, they were not adjustable. Um, they were not Bluetooth, like none of the bells and whistles. Um, so since then, we've um, we've uh, incorporated the uh, true wireless technology. Um, we we worked on the design to make them more durable. Um, we've we are actively working with. Um, artists in the Philadelphia area as we're gearing up for um, to really hit marketing pretty hard um, in preparation for our uh, June Kickstarter. Um, and other than that, I mean, I said I, I said that we were not actively fundraising, but um, when accelerators do come by, um, that makes sense. We do apply. And so we're, um, we're waiting to hear back from two right now. Actually, one of them emailed me a little earlier today just saying that we moved to the next round. Um, we got extremely close um, with um, Techstars. Um, Techstars Rising, they have a, a program called Rising Stars. Um, we made it to the like the very, very last round um, before they ultimately um, went in a different direction. But um, Greg, you, you'll appreci appreciate this, Greg. So um, when they did tell us we made it to the last round, um, they're like, hey, you made it to the last round. By the way, here are like five deliverables we need by the end of the week. Um, two of those things I had already from doing a startup studio. It was the uh, the lean canvas and um, what was the other one? Like the customer forces or something like that, right? <laughs> and I already had those things completely filled out. So I'm like, oh, here you go. Um, but um, great relationships. Um, um, just kind of like having like really strong submissions. They want us to check back in uh, at the end of this quarter, right? So, so we're going to check back in with them, and hopefully that that may lead to something. But other than that, um, honestly, we're we're going to start pushing very hard from towards this uh, Kickstarter um, in June. And um, what would I say? Just just apply. See you then. Um, but just just apply, right? Because uh, the knowledge that you gain is is invaluable um, from um, from the classes and the webinars and the courses. Like you will learn a lot um, that will be very beneficial to you. Um, so yeah, just apply. I I see we I see we lost Ethan. Let me uh, let me interrupt just a second. I see we lost Ethan, and and we're about six o'clock i'm i'm more than happy to have uh you know general discussion questions etc uh you know for like another 10 minutes or so if you, if the audience has questions for our panelists please 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 take advantage of them being here and being able to share their experiences um but i also want to just uh let you know that when we're done that you know when we've answered or addressed all your questions then I have uh, I have like another five or ten slides that I want to go over that'll give you the overview of the program, the Be Your Own Boss Bowl competition, where you can get help, the kinds of things that are available to you. So I just want to make sure um, that we don't get right up to six thirty, and then everybody's jumping off, and I haven't had a chance to share any of that with you. All right, so I'll turn it back over to to Ellie, and if you know, if any of the audience has questions for uh, Ken or Emily, please 
let's let's cover those um, and then I'll do my thing at the at the very end. Yeah, so if anyone has questions, um, feel free to raise your hand or add it in the chat. Um, Bernardo, I see you have your hand raised. So do you have a question? Yeah, sorry, just the chatty guy in the back, I guess. But it was just more in terms of what do you think was more valuable to you? Was it the money, the mentorship that you got, or just the exposure, just the fact that you can say, you know, through this company, I won a competition and that's just, you know, just pedigree. I would say definitely the, well, I would definitely say the mentors and the professors and the, you know, people like Greg helping run this definitely were what, like what they were pivotal in helping us like get to where we are today for sure but really you do need the money in order to like move forward with certain things and like as college students like for me and Caroline when we first created the duo case like we were both just like you know in college like junior senior um and so we really needed that money in order to like, for example, we applied for a provisional like utility patent and then a regular utility patent. And we wouldn't have been able to do that without the money from the Bureau of Boss Bowl or um, like the service packages that we got like from McCarter and English to help us. So definitely like the mo money like you need it in order to move forward and to continue to build in some cases, unless you do have your own like source of income, which like is different when, you know, you're out of college, but definitely the people first, because definitely that's like invaluable relationships. I know I'll have like Greg as my mentor for hopefully the rest of my life. So, you know, like people are, you can't replace them, but definitely the money is super helpful. Thank you. Yeah, definitely the, um, definitely the, the relationships in, in the, the education. Um, like I said, we, we, we made it to the, the, last round of this uh tech stars um accelerator um and, and usually um just my experience when you reach out to accelerators and say hey well you know basically how come you didn't choose me how can i get better a lot of times they don't reply to you but um but um the um customer forces that i submitted that we created through startup studio made an impression on um on um the lady who was making the selections. And um, she she actually said that we had the strongest out of all the candidates. Um, and she gave us some other feedback that, you know, if you improve here, you improve here and reach back out in, uh, at the end of Q1 and we'll have another conversation. Um, so in that sense, I think that just the, the knowledge and the um, relationships that you gain through IEI and the um, Be Your Own Boss Bowl competition is, probably going to be more important to you than the money, right? The money is important, but I think that that's probably going to be more important to you. Oh, thank you. Um, Anthony, did you have another question? Yeah, what's the uh, number one thing or sort of the best tip you have for anyone entering the competition who maybe has previously lost in a prior competition so that they don't slip and fall on that banana peel again? Um, I mean, I think Ethan, Ethan said it before he, before he, um, dropped off, but, um, how do you say it? You miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't shoot type of thing. Um, for, so one of the men, one of my mentors actually that I met through, a uh, um, startup studio, he was telling me how, when you pitch it's, um, it's a performance, right? Like, like, you know, like people came out to, to see a performance and I kind of, that really stuck with me, like moving forward through like through other pitches. Right. Um, so, I mean, I guess that's some, that's a piece of advice I can give, but really, I think, um, I think you really just kind of got to shoot your shot. And, and, you know, for me, um, when I applied and I, uh, the first time, and I took that learning, right, and incorporated into the next time, and then we did better the second time around. I would definitely just say, like, for me, really having those important meetings with, like, professors or whoever my mentors were, 
uh, definitely just like checking in with them every single week, like on my progress and just showing them like, like each slide, honestly, and being like, this is what we got. Ask our questions that we have and just like continuous feedback. I feel like definitely, especially through the ESA, like I was constantly talking to other students, entrepreneurial students about it. So I definitely feel like feedback really is helpful. Um, I wish I had more to say, but that's about all I'm thinking and definitely shoot your shot. <laughs> I'd like to jump in on that one just quickly. And that's that, you know, the more you, well, if you've competed before and you didn't, you know, and you didn't get selected to go into the finals, the feedback that you may have gotten the last time, I'd start there and review it if you still have it, um, especially if it's the same idea. And I put that into the chat. Um, however, I think the other issue is, you know, where people felt you were the weakest, you know, where people, where people see the most obvious uh, shortfall, it, you know, it could be maybe the pitch wasn't strong, you know, maybe, uh, you know, maybe it was too clinical or too much, too many numbers, and it didn't tell enough of a story, or maybe people felt that the business model wasn't solid, like the revenue model, can you really ge generate revenue? Or maybe it was people felt that, um, you know, you didn't have a strong enough plan on how you were going to do your customer acquisition. You know, how are you going to build and grow this thing? Or maybe they thought that you hadn't thought through your financial model, you know, carefully enough. Uh, it, it all depends. Like that feedback is really critical uh, and, and different reviewers are going to all zero in on something different because all of these reviewers have different backgrounds, different levels of expertise, different specialties. Um, so all that said, uh, I would you, I would just be trying over the next five or six weeks trying to meet with as many of the what we call our expert mentors as possible, and and that's the over there's about a hundred mentors on the Startup Tree platform. And not all of them are always available. Not all of them are gonna be able to help you, but the ones who are the best and who've worked with us the longest in the IEI and are really knowledgeable about the startup process, regardless of industry, those people are the ones I would focus on. And you can search in Startup Tree for the expert mentor tag in the mentoring section, and there's about 10 or 12 expert mentors in there. I would be seeking them out and, and trying to talk to every one of them, either review your pitch deck with them or just giving them a general overview of your concept. To me, that that's going to be where you get your biggest impact in the shortest period of time. Thank you. Um, I think we are running low on time, but I think, Greg, okay. can we briefly take Susan's question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we'll go to the slides. Okay, awesome. Susan, um, what's your question? Yeah, I was wondering from your guys' experience, what's the best um, result you got from which form of marketing? Because I know marketing is such a big component of startup and just pivoting and trying to find a platform to to reach the most people. What do you think um, was most successful in your experience yeah so uh, i mean I, we're honestly still experimenting with that uh we've we've had success on instagram um just because it's such a, a visual platform um um venturing into tiktok but um as of right now we've had success in instagram but honestly we're still we're still figuring that out Personally, for me, since, uh, you know, we just got our patent and, you know, it's not officially filed until it goes through or it's not official until it goes through the patent office. And then we argue about all the clauses. Um, so we have had to prevent from posting it too much online. So I definitely, as my past social media experience, TikTok is amazing for helping to blow up startups. 
So definitely suggest using that as well as like, uh, like Instagram's a great platform, just as like Ken was saying. So definitely I would start with those two as some of the strongest and definitely video content is a hundred percent being like put over photos. So definitely prioritize like video content for sure. Amazing. Thank you so much to our panelists. I know Ethan isn't here, but thank you, Ken and Emily. Um, we really appreciate your presence and all of your insight into the questions. So virtual round of applause for them. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to pass it over to Greg, who has some more information to share about the competition as a whole. Yeah, thank, thank you, panelists. Um, really cool to have you back again to uh, share updates on what you've been doing. So uh, it, it is great that you did that. Um, if you, I know some of you have to drop off. If you, if you want to drop off, please feel free to do that. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and just quickly try to blitz through some additional slides here that I think will be helpful for people who have never entered the program before the competition. And even if you have before, there might be some updated information in here. All right. So um, submission requirements. There's three things that we're going to be asking you to submit. The first is going to be an executive summary, just one to two pages. There's a template that we, we offer for that. It's just a suggested template. You are not bound to use our template. But you should make sure that whatever information is in our template, that you're going to cover it in whatever format you choose to use. OK, so that's number one. The second one is going to be what we call an investor style pitch deck. So this is not a pitch deck that you might show to a potential customer. This is a pitch deck that you would show to a potential investor. All right. And there's a difference. Again, we have lots of resources available to you. We have examples of previous pitch decks people have submitted. We have um, some suggested articles and videos that you can watch on YouTube. And we also have a template for that. And then the last thing that you'll be submitting is your three-year financial projection, otherwise known as a profit and loss statement or an income statement. And, you know, we realize that if you haven't launched your business yet, you know, these are guesses on your numbers. They're your projections of what you think your financials will look like. If you have launched your business, then that's great, too. You can show whatever actual results you may have had for your first year or two or however long you've been in business. But then we want to see a three-year projection going out. All right. Okay. Um, we offer lots of great resources to help you along the way. So I've already mentioned templates. There are examples of submissions. There's a document that, that provides tips on how to, how to work through issues in the uh, submissions process. The eligibility policies are, are in there. We will be doing recordings of all of our workshops and we'll be doing four or five workshops. All the recordings of those workshops, just like tonight, as well as all of the slide decks for those workshops will all be shared back in this shared resources folder up on our, our Google Drive. A copy of the judge's scoring rubric so you know what elements they're going to be looking for, what the what the weighting is, how many points each of those sections are worth, right? That's really important because you don't want to be spending a whole lot of time on a section that might only be worth five points and maybe not spending as much time on another section that could be worth 25 points. All right, so we will offer to you this shared resources folder, lots of great information in it. You heard our panelists talk about mentoring on our Startup Tree platform. And if you're not a member of Startup Tree, I'm gonna hit that in a second, but you're gonna wanna join that and get on the platform so that you can go search for, look and book mentoring appointments right through the platform with all of these people who are volunteering their time, about 30% of them, maybe a little more than that, are Temple alums and they've volunteered their time as well as the other 70%. These are, uh, most of them are like senior executives. They, they hold you know pretty high level positions in corporate, in corporations or they themselves have launched multiple startups. Some of the people in here are 
current active angel investors or work at venture capital firms. So they have seen hundreds, if not thousands of pitches and presentations from startup founders just like you. So please, it's our, our most valuable resource, I think, is take advantage of the mentoring. Um, the workshop series, as I mentioned, we're going to be doing four additional workshops, uh, one every Wednesday night, except the final one, which is on a Thursday evening. All right. So next week, I'll be going over and doing a deeper dive on the competition overview, getting started, the key elements that, that need to be in your submission, and some tactics of how to approach that. On September, I'm sorry, on February 22nd, we'll have... Adam, Lam, uh, Adam Shambaugh from the Temple Business Library joining us. I'll give an overview on market opportunity and competitive landscape. And then he's going to spend some time showing you some of the great resources at the Temple University Library that you can use to do that marketing and competitive research. All right, really valuable, good stuff. March 1st is the uh, workshop we'll be doing on financial projections and assumptions. And then on March 16th, we have a guest, another guest speaker coming in to talk about the art, not the science, of pitching. So some really good topics that will help you with your submission, um, help you get ready to become a finalist and to be your own boss bowl. And you can use the QR code to register for the workshops. Other key dates of things coming up. You can see that we have two other special mentoring events coming up on March 15th during the day from 12 to 1 with our Entrepreneurial Student Association. You can pitch your ideas to them and have them give you feedback. And then on March 20th, Expert Mentoring Night, where we bring in um, some of our expert mentors, those people I was talking about, who will come into breakout rooms and you can jump from breakout room to breakout room to ask them your questions. Submissions are due March 22nd at 1159 p.m., which is by midnight. Um, on April 7th, after all of our reviewers who go through all of these submissions and do the scoring and feedback, after they've done their job, we'll announce finalists on April 7th. The following week will be pitch coaching for all of the finalists. Each finalist gets a special one-hour session with a team of pitch coaches to help you on not just your business idea, but also on your pitching style. And then our final event, April 20th, is the live pitch event and award ceremony. We'll be doing that in the 1810 Accelerator space on campus, and it'll be streamed live on YouTube. Some tips for Be Your Own Boss Bowl. Number one is make sure you understand all the requirements. Take a look at the template documents. Make sure that you have a plan for completing your submission. There's about six weeks left until the submission date. That is still plenty of time for you to get started. But to a lot of people, when they first look at this, it's kind of like eating an elephant. You know, like, how do you eat an elephant? Well, the answer is one bite at a time. And it's no different than your approach to entering a competition like this here at Temple or any other place. And that's set out a plan and then work to your plan. You gotta stick to it. Every week you wanna be making progress, hold yourself accountable, and you'll find yourself in that last week being in really good shape. Some people enter the Be Your Own Boss Bowl as just a solopreneur themselves. Other people do have a team or they try to bring other members onto their team. Some people have advisors. Advisors might be professors that you've spoken with. It might be some of the mentors that you've met with. If, if you're interested in their input and they've been, been providing great input, you could ask them whether or not they would be willing to be an advisor to you over the next month or two and to be listed on your presentation as an advisor to your team. All right, you've heard the, the speakers talk about coming to the workshops, utilizing the mentors, enough said on that. Um, other resources that are available, the Blackstone Launchpad on the Temple campus at the downstairs of the Student Center, the Temple SBDC, the Small Business Development Center is, is a great resource to help you as well. And then the Temple Writing Lab, 
They also can help you if you're having trouble taking your thoughts and putting them into words, whether it be in writing for the executive summary or whether it be in your pitch deck. Um, I'm going to ask you to take just a second and hit this QR code if you wouldn't mind. It's a, a short four question survey about tonight's event. If you'd be willing to do that, I'd appreciate it. And then I'm going to just go on here. If you haven't joined the 1810 Accelerator space here on campus, and this is open to, again, students, alumni, faculty, and staff, I encourage you to consider it. It's awesome space to come and hang out, to work on your idea, to talk to other people about your idea, to meet people who, um, who may end up being people that would be interested in joining your team. Again, you can sign up to be a member here. It's open to anybody from any school and any major. We also, I mentioned about Startup Tree. So you can use this QR code to join Startup Tree. It is the hub of all of our activity on the, in the entrepreneurial space here at Temple. There's well over 200,000 people on the platform globally. And there's about a thousand people on the platform now at Temple. So I'd encourage you to join. You can look at events, you can sign up for workshops, you can book appointments with mentors, you can speak to other students. And then last but not least is our Entrepreneurial Student Association. If you're interested in getting with a bunch of other like-minded people, learning about entrepreneurship, listening to great guest speakers, doing some field trips and some socials, feel free to join the ESA as well. And if you'd like our link for FLDP points, uh, if you attended tonight's workshop and you wanna get credit for that with FLDP points, you can use the QR code for undergraduate or email us at 1810 at temple.edu and we'll be happy to make sure you get your credit. And that's it. That's what we have for tonight's program. I hope you enjoyed it and I'm happy to hang on. And if you've got any questions, um, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have about the competition. Yeah, Bernardo. Yeah, so can, can you hear me? Because my, my headphone disconnected. Okay, perfect. It was more about um, the like what, what do we need to have for the company to be eligible? So one, the company have to be already established. And if so, no, okay. And, oh, no. And does it have to be a US-based company or can it be based internationally? No, you could. It, it could be an idea that you have to launch a venture in another country. Okay, perfect. Cool. Okay. Um, right. Yeah, the, the difference, the main difference between the Be Your Own Boss Bowl and the other programs we run, the like the Innovative Idea Competition or the Change Maker Challenge Competition, those programs are focused more on the idea, all right? So for Innovative Idea Competition, we're looking for new to the world ideas and, and you know, a little bit about, well, how would you take that and go about creating the company? Change Maker Challenge is the same kind of thing, but the focus for Change Maker Challenge is all about social or environmental impact. The difference for Be Your Own Boss Ball is it's not as focused on the idea being new and innovative. It's focused on do you have a good plan on how you would take that idea and turn it into a real viable business? Yeah. Okay. So, um, you know, it's not about having some new great app, right? It's about like, maybe you wanna just open your own coffee shop in Philly, right? And the question would be, well, okay, there's lots of other coffee shops in Philly. Like, how are you gonna be different and better? How are you gonna differentiate yourself? And why would people wanna to come to you? What's your value proposition? Yeah. If you've got a really strong story about that and how you can take that concept and turn it into a real business, and show through your financial projections that it's it's viable business, then even if it's not investable, you still have a chance of winning in the Be Your Own Boss Bowl, all right? 
because not everybody has a scalable, investable business. Some people have businesses that they want to launch that are more like a lifestyle business. All right. And, and those are just as eligible for the be your own boss bowl as long as they have a solid plan. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Yep. Other questions? Ken, if you need to jump, go ahead. Thank you so much again for, for joining. Yeah, thanks for inviting me, Greg. Um, yeah, I, I really, I remember, I remember last year being a, a participant and watching uh, Enoch present. So um, I'm really glad that I was able to um, join as a panelist this year. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. Send me, an email, send me an email with an update about your patent. Yeah, I will. I will. I'll send you an email. Um, I'll work on it now. I'll shoot it to you either tonight or tomorrow morning. All right. Great. Thank you. Yep. See ya. All right. Any any other questions on the competition or the resources or the process? If, if nobody else has another question, I'll ask just another final one for the pitch. So is it going to be uh, in person or is it going to be virtual, the final pitch? Great question. Um, the, the short answer is it depends, all right? So pre-COVID, 100% of the people that entered the program were, were local. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, so it was live in person and everybody pitched live in front of the live audience and in front of the judges. During COVID, everything went virtual. Right. And, and, you know, that we were fortunate enough to be able to pivot very quickly and run the entire program without skipping a beat and do it virtually. That allowed us to take entries from anywhere, right? So we, we found that a lot of alumni were coming back and participating and they were, you know, they were entering from Chicago, New York, Atlanta. And in fact, post COVID, all right, now that we're back in person again, but, but hybrid because we still have a lot of people remotely that want to participate. Right. So for the Innovative Idea Competition, we actually did both. We had all of our undergraduate teams pitch live and in person in the space that looks like it's right behind me, okay? But we had two finalists that were remote. One was in Los Angeles and one was in Rome. Right. And so, so for that track, in order to keep it fair and, and have a level playing field, for that track, we asked all of the finalists to pitch on Zoom because we didn't feel it was fair to have two people pitching in person and two people pitching remotely. And so all four finalists in the upper track pitched remotely on Zoom, mm -hmm. even, though, even though they may have been in our space. Okay. okay. So the answer is if everybody's local, if everybody that makes it to the finals can come to Philadelphia and do it, we want you here live and pitching. But if you're, you know, if you're in Kansas City and you can't make it to Philadelphia, then we will make arrangements to have you and all of your other, you know, uh, con contestants, all the other competitors that are in your track, they'll all be pitching the same as you do. Okay, great. Thank you. Any other questions? No? All right, well, I wanna thank you for coming tonight. I hope you got information that was useful. Hope you learned a lot of things. Um, you know, truly anybody can win the Be Your Own Boss Ball. You know, it's just, you, you have to have, a, you know, a, a solid idea and you have to have a good plan on how you're gonna turn that into a real business. And if you can come up with a good convincing way to, to give that pitch and convey that information, you've got as good a chance of winning as anybody. And the workshops that are going to be coming up over the next four or five weeks are all designed to help you get there. All right. If you have any questions, I'll, I'll just close by saying if you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to me um, at the IEI, either through IEI at temple.edu or directly to greg.fegley at temple.edu. And I'd be happy to, you know, to talk with you, meet with you on Zoom or in person and uh, get your, your questions answered. All right.